All right, so I'm just a little backed up when it comes to Fan Fridays. This is a Johto Classic Battle, but it's an Evolution Johto Classic Battle, so we're going to watch what happens. I mean, Johto Classic, from what I heard, was pretty fun. I didn't get a chance to enter because I've just been way too busy trying to keep up with Pokemon Sun and Moon and all that craziness going on right there to make, like, a really solid performing team. But hey, let's go and see what the fans are bringing. And Espeon versus Jolteon. Like, the Eevees were very powerful in, in this tournament, for sure. And that is going to be Politoed. So, if Espeon gets, like, a free light screen or some shenanigans like that, it could get a little interesting. So, Espeon has a Psychic. Alright, straight up damage. Politoed switching in on that. Going to drop below half. And it has an eject button. So, I guess that was the opponent's strategy all along. So, it takes a little bit of damage on that Life Orb with the Espeon. And it gets the rain out for the Kingdra, so, alright, you come in. I, I wonder if that was, like, the entire plan. Like, just a full-on bait-and-switch into scouting. So, that's going to be Dazzling Gleam on top of the Substitute. The opponent is going for some stuff right here. Because Kingdra's going to get that Swift Swim. Um, I'd imagine Damp Rock... No, wait, there was no Damp Rock. It's Eject Button. Alright, just going to turn it into a Hydro Pump for maximum damage right there. And the opponent getting that drop with the Hydro Pump. I guess the... Substitute was a good call when you think about it because he wanted to get a little bit more life orb damage on the Espeon, I guess. But Rain, Hydro Pump, Kingdra, probably going to be enough anyways. Ooh, switching out the Kingdra. Doesn't want to get toxic, doesn't look like he wants to deal with too much when it comes to the Umbreon. And bring in the Jolteon to kind of contest this. And that's going to be a swagger onto Jolteon. Jolteon's confused and not going to make much of that attack boost, so it's okay. And now we get to see how frustrating does Umbreon get to be. How frustrating does Jolteon get to be? Every once in a while, you see like the toxic pseudo stall Jolteon and things get pretty funny. But the Synchronize is going to come in and the foul play. So swag play the Jolteon. That's a good amount of damage. If Jolteon hits himself in confusion, we'll go down to that burn. We'll, or not burn, but we'll go down to the poison. If not the uh, hitting himself in confusion overall. Damage burn, not burn burn. Whatever. Here we go. So Jolteon has it confused. Gets the Thunderbolt off. But Umbreon is a very tanky Pokemon. Yeah, especially when it comes out. And it has the Heal Bell. Man, it's always so annoying when you get that Umbreon. It's like, synchronize Heal Bell. How do you get over that? You don't. You can't stall it. Just bad things. So that's going to be Poison on the Jolteon. Jolteon snaps out of the Confusion. Gets the Toxic down. Umbreon's going to avoid the Toxic. And gets a Moonlight this turn. I mean... Toxic, toxic, toxicking. Wow, that's a hard word to pronounce. It works, but I mean, you're just going to make it burn a turn on the heal bell at some point anyways, and you go down to the poison anyways. Now, it's going to be Politoed on the field. So, Politoed has to soften up the Umbreon to get the most out of this Kingdra right now. So, Drizzle's going to come back in. And it's just going to be Swag Play. I mean, the Swag Play, Heal Bell, Moonlight. There you go, guys. Umbreon 3.0 for all of your strategy needs, and that's that's it. And I mean, that would be interesting if Umbreon gets the burn, it would just synchronize that over to the Politoed, and the status gets way too much. Politoed is confused though, and it will hit itself in confusion. A little bit of damage right there, which means now we get to see the foul play. Foul play onto the Politoed. Get dunked! I mean, the foul play on Dark type Pokemon is really powerful because. The stab. So we saw a little bit of damage on the confusion, but we're doing three times more damage on that foul play. Actually, a little more than that, even. It's pretty heavy. And then that's going to be the sub. But the sub actually works out in this situation. How's Umbreon going to get over that? Because, like, the swagger can't swagger it, can't really do too much. Oh, the massive amount of damage out of that hydro pump. But the, the stall right here is about to get pretty interesting. So life orb damage goes down. Foul pl pr play will go and break that substitute. So, Kendra's going to transition over to the Ice Beam. Taking that Ice Beam onto Umbreon. Not getting it down, though. The opponent did that because you don't want a Hydro Pump miss. But Umbreon did, just didn't care. Like, I think the opponent underestimated his total damage. Or something like that. Because when you look at it, you know, you're getting Stab on that Hydro Pump. Which has more base power. Which is also getting boosted in the rain. So, it's doing... I don't even know, like three times the damage of an Ice Beam? Is that even correct? It seems like it's just that much more damage by, probably not three times, right? It's 
still a massive amount. There's a lot of math involved either way. And it's getting really close to that. So the Ice Beam didn't have the 50 damage to finish off the Umbreon. And Umbreon cleans it up with the eventual sweep. Oh my goodness. Okay. That was a pretty good battle. Um, He didn't submit another one. But let's try to get another Johto Classic in on this battle right here. Alright, so we have this battle from Pat. Actually, pretty cool idea from what I can see potentially happening right here. So we have Murkrow. Murkrow will set up for the, like, it'll just make it, the opponent's life hard, and that'll happen. And then we go into Venomoth. Maybe Venomoth will set up for Quiver Dance, and then Quiver Dance into the Cloister for massive damage and stuff, or just a lot of backup sweeping. Like, okay, Murkrow makes it hard for the opponent, and then it's like, what do you choose? Uh, Shell Smash into maybe Physical Sweep, or Venomoth into Special Sweep. Stuff like that. But that's gonna be a Thunder Wave on the Murkrow into the Dark Pulse. Also, the opponent running Seedra. I'm wondering if that's, like, Burn... Rush, Bruiser, Seedra, or something. Murkrow going to land another Dark Pulse. Is he going for Flinch? Like, Para Flinch on the 20% chance with a Dark Pulse? Could happen. But the Murkrow is also putting out a surprising amount of damage. There's the burn onto the Murkrow. Murkrow will not go down to the burn here. It will be done next turn. Oh, has a roost. Never mind. Looks like he wants to survive. He living. He living. Seedra though, it's like, see, I would, I would almost take that trade right there. So Octazooka coming in from the Seedra, a little bit of damage. Murkrow, yeah, you can't win out that Roost War right there. Ah, he's gonna try though. Maybe, maybe something happens. Okay. It's getting a little, this battle's getting a little fancy. No accuracy drop on the Octazooka. Seedra gets paralyzed. Ah, that's what he was fishing for. Fishing for the paralysis, playing to those win conditions. Oh boy. And Murkrow's gonna like, hey. <laughs> Why not roost this one up? Because now that gives you that extra time to survive. Seedra with the Scald. Scald damages up. Murkrow going to survive it. A little bit of burn right there. I mean, that's when you that's when you take the finish on the Seedra, right? Murkrow's going to roost, though. What? I'm, I'm, I'm just... I'm... Oh, I, get, I mean, are you still... He's still waiting on that paralysis. You might as well. I mean, it is a 3v3. You're not expecting Murkrow to be in the battle forever. Octazooka misses as well. Murkrow is going to find that opportunity to get the Dark Pulse in. And that will finish off the Seedra. Pretty sure the crit didn't matter. It looks like Seedra is about a third. If Murkrow sweeps, I'm going to lose my mind. Murkrow hurt by the burn. That's going to be Vileplume coming out. Vileplume is very tanky as well. Not going to be massive on the damage, but Murkrow setting up that taunt. Doesn't want to see a Sleep Powder. Oh, gets the Sludge Bomb in its face, though. Murkrow taking the damage. <sighs> Survives. 9% or 9 health, kind of. I thought he'd be at 9. And like some very low health into the Roost. We'll run out of Roost eventually. But it's making it happen right now. Boplin with Sludge Bomb. Um, is that going to drop it enough? Oh, that's going to be enough to take out the Murkrow. Okay. <sighs> couldn't, couldn't get that one out, but... Valplume just taking the offense, did not expect that at all, and Venomoth comes in, so Venomoth has Psychic. Quiver Dance Psychic, GG. Free Quiver Dance for Venomoth as well. Raticate is also going to be on the field, and Raticate doesn't want to be going up against that Quiver Dance. I mean, you plus two on the Venomoth, you one-shot everything, and you call it a day. GG. Flam Orb on the Raticate, though. Getting a little fancy. Finamoth does not mind at all right now. We gotta just get that Focus Sash going or something like that. Radicate with the facade. Alright, how much damage is Radicate gonna put out? Solid, but not immense. A little bit of damage from the burn. That Oh, Radicate has the Sucker Punch. It's gonna fail for the Baton Pass. Looks like it was the bat Baton Pass Quiver Dance on the Venomoth. Saving it right here into the Cloister. Very interesting call. So yeah, it is gonna be like special multi-chain cloister of shenanigans right now icicle spear is an icicle spear physical though <laughs> yeah that's wow that's that's a lot of damage diversity that we're seeing right there yo i was i was very very sure that icicle spear is a physical hit right or am, or am i just bad at this game um i looked it up it's physical so that physical just dunked and we're getting more so I'm boosting for the special might just have like a Hydro Pump or a Scald up its sleeve. Bloom's taking the damage though. Bloom is going to go down because of the skill link. And that is the GG. So, kind of what I thought. Actually, it's pretty much what I thought. I just, hmm. You know, Murkrow does its thing. 
Finamoth takes advantage. You go into the cloister off of those quiver dances, and it's a good one. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this battle. We got one more coming up for fan fries, and I hope to see you guys in that battle as well.